Hey guys, welcome to Ufala Arts Talk right here on the, at the Main Street Studio every Tuesday at 1 o'clock. We bring to you more and more interesting people uh, to learn about and we're really excited today because we have a special guest. Um, before we go into that, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on with us here at the Arts Council. Uh, today, we are going to be having our grand reopening at 2 o'clock. If you are around, come on down uh, and, and visit with us. Come and see what's going on at the studio uh, as we celebrate our grand reopening. As you know, we've been closed pretty much because of the COVID, and um, we are now going back to our regular hours, and we'll be open from Tuesday through Saturday. So we're very excited about that. Um, also, just a reminder, October 31st, we have the the rainbow pageant, the children's rainbow pageant down at the park. It's a... Um, outside adventure. Uh, if you would like your kids to participate, let us know. Uh, we're also looking for adults to help us out, so it's going to be a lot of fun, and that will be uh, on Halloween night at starting at 7 o'clock. So you can still do your downtown trick-or-treating and then come down and uh, sit in the park. It's not real long. You can still go outdoors uh, uh, trick-or-treating if you want after that. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but thanks again for joining us today, and I want to introduce you to a man of mystery. He popped up in uh, You Follow about eight years ago, and uh, everyone wanted to know, who is he? Who is he? We don't know that much about him, but he probably knows a lot about you because he may have written about you or something. <laughs> so he is a really nice guy. I enjoy talking to him. Um, he is Ufala's very own Jimmy Olson. Let me introduce you to you, uh, Jerry Fink. I'm going to flip it around. Hey, Jerry. Hello. <laughs> you can take your mask off. We are safe in here. We do try to practice, of course, you know, our social distancing and whatnot, but uh, adjust my camera a little bit. So thanks for being with us today. Well, my pleasure. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. Oh, you know what? I am slacking off. Here. Put that on. Oh, I'll clip it right. Oh. <laughs> I'll clip it on your shirt. <laughs> I thought maybe it was a hearing aid. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> hey, you know, it's live here. Whatever happens, that's it's just live. It's fun. So yeah, I, that was that was my fault. I forgot to hook that on you earlier. That's what I get. That's I was okay. actually early today. Glenn is always wondering if I'm going to show up, and uh, so I got set up too early. It knocked me off my <laughs> schedule here. <laughs> Talking about schedules, mm -hmm. you have a weekly schedule at the Indian Journal, I, right? No. Huh? What kind of a, a weekly schedule? I mean, do you always feel like you're on a deadline? Well, we are all. You know. We're, you're always working. If you're not working on this week's paper, you're working on next week's paper, or a week, uh, two or three weeks down the road. It, it's you're always thinking ahead. Uh, you never want to run out of news because that would be a big issue. True, true. So your title there is managing editor. What Correct. does that consist of? Did what? What does that consist of? Oh, it's uh, basically uh, it's writing news, gathering news, deciding what news to to use and where to place it, and uh, editing whatever stories come through. Ah. Okay, I think it's really interesting that you came to us from Las Vegas. Tell me about that. How did you end up in Eufaula? Uh, well, you know, I, I used to work at the Tulsa World. Uh, I was a state reporter, and I came to Eufaula quite often and wrote stories about you know things going on, the Main Street programs, and uh, a lot of a lot of activities back then. And so I knew, I was familiar with Eufaula. So uh, when I was in Las Vegas with the uh, Las Vegas Sun in 2009, uh, they laid me and about 40 other people off because of the re recession. It was very, pretty severe out there. Wow. So I was old enough to retire, so I, I retired and got bored. And I came back to Oklahoma for a visit back, it was 2012 early, and hadn't noticed there was an opening at the Eufaula Journal. So I, I came in and applied and, and uh, was hired. Uh, Jeff Mayo, who owns the paper, I, 
ironically or coincidentally, when I started in this career in 19, 1974, I worked for the Sequoia County Times in Salisaw. Oh. Jeff Mayo, who I work for now, his father, Jim Mayo, owned that paper, so his father hired me initially. Oh, wow. So over 40 years, I've known, I've watched Jeff grow up. And uh, so, you know, uh, they knew me, I knew them, and so it was kind of an easy, easy uh, decision to go to work here. Right, a nice fit. Right, right. Yeah. I came out of retirement and yeah. went back into journalism. Well, you know, I see you all over town. I mean, it's not, it's just, so anything that needs to be covered or, um, you know, you're, I see you there. So, and, and that's nice because that's really what we need. Oh, I'm having camera troubles here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, that's what we need is to have is to have that coverage for you, Fala. Um, and of course, here at, at the Arts Council, you mm -hmm. know, we like to talk about art. And being a writer, I mean, that's an art in itself. And is that basically yeah. how you started, like with writing? What was your interest that got you well, into this job or got you into well, doing initially, this type of work? Uh, you know, I, I've wanted to be a writer my entire life basically from age of 10, that's, that was my goal. Not, not journalism writing, just creative writing. Yeah. And, you know, books, uh, movie scripts, that sort of thing. Yeah. But I figured, you know, there, there's, it's hard to make a living writing books and movie scripts because everybody in the country has a movie script they're trying to sell. In the back pocket, yeah. <laughs> so, I've heard that. <laughs> so uh, I thought the best way to get some experience writing was get into journalism. Plus, it's an interesting career. You know, I, sure. I was deciding what career, besides being a, writing novels, I wanted to pursue. And journalism afforded me the, the opportunity, I thought, to meet a lot of interesting people, have diverse experiences, get me into positions and situations that I would not otherwise, uh, find, you know, get into. Absolutely. So. Uh, that's I decided to to pursue journalism, and it's been you know something new every day. You never know what's going to happen when you sit down at your desk, whether you know you're just going to have a tragedy or a yeah. murder or uh, a political upheaval or, or whatever. It's uh, I like the I like the variety, the diversity. Sure, mm -hmm. that that does sound exciting. Do um, well. Like I mentioned earlier, do you feel like you know just about a little bit about everybody, everything, every business? Well, I I know a lot, but <laughs> you never really know people. Right. Uh, they always surprise you, you know, uh, with some of the things they can or can do or say. And so I, you know, uh, I'm always a little bit surprised about every uh. everybody. But no, I, I I'm still learning. <laughs> Well, that's why I was so excited about this interview because, um, you know, we just try to get to know the people a little bit better. And we've never had a chance to sit down and talk with Jerry Fink. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, like I said, we see you everywhere and uh, we see your stories in the paper. Mm -hmm. And, but um, I feel like you're very supportive in, of all the different organizations. Mm -hmm. I know you've been very supportive and helpful for the Arts Council and we appreciate mm -hmm. that. And, um, but, you know, when, um, I told, like I told my husband, okay, we're, we're going to interview Jerry. And so he kind of thought about it because he knows we do the arts. I said, but you know, writing is an art. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if you're writing for the paper or like you said, for books. Now, have you ever done that? Have you done, have you written a book? Yeah, but I always throw them away. Cause, oh, <laughs> cause no. I'm never, never satisfied with it. Right. But um, it, it's a journalistic writing is a lot different than creative writing. Mm -hmm. So there's less art and... and it's, it's uh, more of a craft, you mm -hmm. know, uh, like a mechanic or anyone else who has certain uh, uh, talents for uh, for writing. It's not necessarily uh, creative like Hemingway or someone like that. Uh, right. But you know, you you've got to write with clarity and, and yeah. in journalism. You got to be honest and uh, unbiased. And, right. Uh, not show favoritism, right. and so that in itself is kind of an art. <laughs> yes, I would say so, and just to make it interesting, yeah. you know, you, it, it, I mean, you can anybody could write a piece for the paper or whatever, mm -hmm. but is is it going to be interesting to read? Is it going to catch your attention? You right. know, and that's I can say that that for you mm -hmm. that you do have that 
the craft down, you yeah. know, that art. So well, I've been doing it for over well, 74. That makes it, what, 40 plus years, 45 wow. years? So, yeah. Wow. Uh, like I say, I'm still learning every day. So it, it's a... Uh, it's a, that's another reason I got into it because you know I loved edu I loved college I loved going to classes and learning and and journalism it, it's like an education every day you got to learn something you're always challenging yourself yeah and to learn that's more cool. that, that so of. there's a question that I ask all our uh, mm -hmm. artists that we interview what is art to you well art is to me it's it's basically a, a creative process your self expression. Uh, you, what you express may not appeal to everybody, but I think a true artist does not con consider how it's going to affect other people. It's just affect how you affect yourself. If you're happy with what you do and nobody else is, well, you're still happy with what you've done. It's yeah. nice to touch people, it's nice to be accepted, but I don't think that's the primary purpose of art. Hmm, yeah. Very good, that's very good. Well, tell me a little bit about your background uh, as you were growing up. You said you wanted to write as you were a child. Mm -hmm. What do you think influenced that? Well, when I was in elementary school, I don't know, for some reason, I, you know, I, I grew up in a little town in California called Rodeo. Mm -hmm. Had 10,000 population, about 15, 20 miles from San Francisco. But uh, I was in like the third, no, it was fourth grade, and, my, and I would write little short stories just, you know, just because I enjoyed it, and my teacher, Ms. Schultz, at that time, uh, when she was busy with the paperwork in the classroom, well, she would have me get up in front of the class and read my little stories, and, you know, people seemed to like it, so that kind of inspired me, and from that point on, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Wow. Did you have a theme? Did you have like a certain storyline that you followed in your stories? No, no, no. Or a I, character? I, or? No, I, uh, when I, you know, when I was in the third, fourth grade, well, you know, my storyline was, well, if, if you're not nice to me, I'll kill you in my story. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So there was a certain power in art. Sure. Yeah, yeah that's true. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, that, so anyway, that, that's you know, I, I've always pursued writing in one one way or another. When I was I went to City College in San Francisco and took some journalism courses, and went to Berkeley and took a course in rhetoric, which is kind of a it's kind of like English, only you know, it's uh, more about how an, a writer or anyone else you know persuades people. The art of persuasion, mm -hmm. you know, rhetoric, yeah. you know, basically how. To, how you influence people, the techniques and things. So, so I studied rhetoric there, then went to journalism school at, at OU, majored in communications, which, you know, I, I, I took a lot of professional writing courses, you know, film scripts, novels, uh, and journalism, and uh, got my master's there, and from there on I got into the business. Wow. Now you've won a lot of awards. Uh, I've won a few, yeah. Yeah, and just as just recently, I think I saw something in the paper or somewhere well, that. We've, yeah, we've our, our between uh, our papers in Ufala and in uh, Shakota, well, we've won I think it was three Sequoia Awards, which are the highest awards you get in journalism in Oklahoma. So wow. we've we've won three of those and. Numer numerous uh, uh, news and, and writing awards. Yeah, so well, awesome. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. That's good. People don't realize too that that brings that brings our little city great recognition. You know. Oh yeah, and it's for quite that, an honor. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's through the Oklahoma Press Association, so uh, you know it's pretty competitive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I'm happy to. And the Indian Journal's been around a long time. Oh, long, long. It's the oldest since 19. Uh, 1874 or 76, 1876, and I do a little history column every week, and, and I go back to, you know, basically when the paper first started, and yeah. I'm reading stories about, the, you know, the Battle of the Little Bighorn, and this was in our paper. Wow. <laughs> so it's uh, fascinating what, uh, what the IJ has covered during its uh, 100 and 
50 years, however many years of yeah. uh, been publishing. Wow. We were we were formed in the same year that the telephone was created. Oh wow! Well. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, do you have a favorite um, article or story that you covered that just sticks out in your mind, or that you've just like always been really proud of, or maybe that was shocking, or that you know? Well, I, I've I've written thousands of stories, yeah. so it's, it's it's hard to so nothing that just that no, that you know, sticks I, out that I, you. I, I went to Pakistan. Uh, back in the 80s, I went to Pakistan the first time, and I got a lot of stories there, which I, oh. I found fascinating. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I had a chance to return two years ago, and so I was able to see the changes that took place in that country in all those years, and I I had some interesting stories out of out of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from a personal point of view, that that was uh, you know I, I very I was very proud of those. But as far as day-to-day -day stories, I, you know, I, I've written about so many different uh, people, and they're all fascinating. I, I prefer to write people stories, I think, than news stories, just you know, the human interest yeah. stories. So, um, uh, I, when I come across a good human interest story, I, you know, I kind of focus in on that. What about um, taking your work home with you? I mean, do, do you have trouble sometimes, like shaking a story or? Or just leaving it at the door when you go home. I mean, because I know you've had to cover some. Oh yeah. You know. No, I. After so many stories and so many years, I. It's it's. Uh, I, I accept whatever happens. You know, I I, yeah. I don't. I don't let it bother me too much. I mean, yeah. obviously, if there are certain things that you, you can't have not be be bothered by. You know, a child is involved or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but it kind of but, lingers. Uh, yeah. What about uh, celebrities? Any big celebrities that you've interviewed? Well, I was entertainment writer in, in Las Vegas for 10 years, so I uh -huh. met Ooh. every every major entertainer who came through town, I met. I, I met really? And, and interviewed. How and, fun. And, uh, Donnie and Marie? Do I? Donnie and Marie? Yes. She kissed <laughs> me on the forehead. That, that was one of her sticks. Oh. She'd go into the audience and kiss someone on the forehead and leave a lipstick mark on her head. Yeah. So yeah. I, I promised to never wash my forehead after that. <laughs> But they put on a great show. Yeah, I mean, they do. Um, yeah, maybe a little corny, but it's still a great show. <laughs> People were third, and they just they just ended their run there in Los Angeles. Yeah. But uh, I met oh you know, Robert Goulet. He you know, he he passed away. But one of the greatest entertainers on Broadway. And he and I were at a show together at the same time, not together, but we were sitting next to each other and I, I would chat with him during intermission and when the show was over, I, I thought I'd do an interview. And I think he must have, must have seen that because he, he jumped up and he said, excuse me, I have to go pee. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, sure. Oh, no. <laughs> but you know, the, this guy is, like I say, fame, fortune, everything, and he's very down to earth to make a, you know, a little yeah. comment like that. that, that yeah. Me up. So, oh, that's funny. Never forget his last words. <laughs> Aww. Wow. Well, we're about to run over time here, but I appreciate you coming in. Do you have any last words for maybe someone that's interested in coming, getting into journalism or writing? Or well, Journalism is a tough sell today. Mm. Uh, everybody fancies themselves a journalist if they get online and, and post something on Facebook. So person who wants to be a journalist has, has to be very careful of Facebook because it generates so much false information. Right. And so, you know, it's an, I think it's an honorable profession to, uh, as opposed to what the president thinks. Uh, and I, I think anyone who would, uh, would think about it should, you know, should look into it and see if it's, uh, is, you know, suits their personality and their temperament and their their ambitions. No one's going to get rich. I mean, it's got you got to do it just you know for, for the love of it. For the love of it. Yeah. Not not for the money. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Well, again, you've done a great job here, and you follow. We appreciate you. We no problem. Appreciate everything you do for uh, the if arts. If you have any good news tips, let me know. Okay, <laughs> we will. Well, thanks for joining us, and guys, we are out of here. But thank you again, and we will be back next Tuesday at one o'clock.